Right, Shalom, this brother tells the wall coming back at you, giving all praise, glory, and honor to Yah, Bashem, Yah, Shah, Bashem, Rakakodash. Double honors be to the apostles, the bishops, the elders, the great millstone, the men I learned from. Honors be to the brothers out here pushing the truth on the highways and hedges, letting your light shine, helping to seal this body, this select, this remnant, so that the Lord can come back and deliver us and get us up out this bitch. I pray it be edifying lesson, just a little short something I wanted to do. I was uh, scrolling through Twitter and I saw this image. Uh, it's a graph. And it shows you the median household income in the United States by ethnic group. And at the top of the list, you got uh, so-called Indian Americans that have a, a median household income of 100,000. All right, six band, six, what was it, 100 bands? 100,000, six figures. And then at the bottom of the list, you can, you know, guess who it is. You know, the so-called Negro, so-called black people, African Americans, Hispanic, Latino Americans, which are the... Um, which are the uh, the nation of Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel? All right, as we've been saying, as we've been telling you, all right, we are the chosen people of the Most High God. We are the people that fit the curses, that fit the prophecies that are written in the scriptures. All right, this is Deuteronomy twenty-eight verse forty-four. It says, "They will lend money to you, but you will not lend to them. They will be the head, and you will be the the tail." Now I'm a, I'm reading this in the New Living Translation. Verse 43, it says, the foreigners living among you will become stronger and stronger while you become weaker and weaker. This is, again, verse 43 in the 28th chapter. Verse 44 says, they will lend money to you, but you will not lend to them. They will be the head and you will be the tail. So these nations that we've been scattered amongst and in here in Babylon, the great, you got all the nations here. All right. These nations, they grow stronger and stronger in this society. They get more and more money, more and more opportunities, while it's like nothing we do can get us ahead. And that's why the scripture says that these curses would be upon us and they would be for a sign and for a witness. All right. This is uh, going back to the KJV version. Deuteronomy 28 verse verse 45, continuing on pretty much. Uh, it says, moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. So the reason we're in this situation is because of the disobedience of our forefathers. You know, so the Lord brought the curses and the scriptures upon us. And I want to look at that word curse and destroy in the Hebrew. The word curse is kwa la la. Uh, which means uh, curse, vilification, execration. Um, let's look up execration, see what that means. Execration. Uh, the curse of impreciation. Imprecation, a thing held in abomination, so abhorrence, blasphemy, condemnation, contempt, damnation, detestation. See, so the Lord pretty much brought a, a, a great deal of detestment amongst us for forsaking the covenant of our forefathers. All right, so we got that. Let's uh, look at the word destroy us. Because we know the Lord ultimately don't want to get rid of us. He just broke us down. That's what destroy means. It means to unbuild. Uh, the word Hebrew is shamad, which means to destroy, to exterminate, to be destroyed, be exterminated, to annihilate, to be devastated. To destroy, to bring, to not, to overthrow. Yeah, to plug down. Utterly, see, see, the Lord overthrew us. We were set up for a point in time, and then He brought us down, brought us low. Verse forty-six, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever, which we know is not like an eternity forever; it's just for a period of time. But these curses are upon us. So, you know, going back to that chart, it just shows you that we are the Israelites because we at the bottom. All right, we're at the very bottom of the chart. Going back to that curse again, Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high 
and thou shalt come down very low. Here it is. These people been here one generation, two generations, three generations. Some of them just getting here and they're able to excel. They have businesses. You know, they're in nice communities. They ain't out here in the slums. They ain't out here working these jobs for ten dollars, eleven, twelve dollars an hour. You know, that's that's Jake having to do that. You see? Verse 44, he shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. They they have to give us jobs. We can't get them jobs. Here it is. They just they just moved here last year. You know what I'm saying? And and, and they giving us jobs. And here it is, we've been here three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten generations, and it just can't get ahead. See what I'm saying? And then you look at all these different countries here, and this is why the scripture says these uh these people are gonna these nations are gonna lament when Babylon is destroyed because see all these people here, these are the various nations that are benefiting that are benefiting and have benefited off uh Babylon the Great having the Israelites in captivity, you know, exploiting our labor and exploiting us being under the curses. This is Revelation the eighteenth chapter, and I'm gonna start at verse nine. And it says, lament for Babylon. It says, and the, king of the, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city. For one, Salaki, for in one hour is thy judgment come and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. See, these other nations, they're not oppressed like we are here. All right, Israelites are really fucking oppressed, you know, here in Babylon the Great. Let's get, let's get Jeremiah real quick. See, Jeremiah 15 and 33, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. All right, that's the northern and the southern kingdom, so-called Latin all right, indigenous tribes here, as well as the so-called, you know, uh, black tribes. And it says, and all that took them captives, held them fast. They refused to let them go. See? So, Revelation 18, 11, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. And, and that's where Babylon the Great is. It's a big import city. All right, you look at this list, who you got? You got the Indians, the Filipinos, the Taiwanese, the Sri Lankans, the Japanese, the Chinese, the Pakistan. See, all of those various nations, they, they send products over here. America imports products from all of those countries. So once this place gets destroyed, these other countries, they're going to mourn because they're not, you know, the, the cash cow is gone. The, the, you know, that golden cup that they was making all that money with, selling their products and you know, being able to thrive in their societies because of, you know, changing that, that, that U.S. dollar, which goes into that accepting the fornication too, you know, they're not, they're not going to have that anymore. They ain't going to have that anymore. See? Verse 12, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and thionine wood and, manner, and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beast and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee and all the things which were dainty and goodly were departed from thee and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. See, the other countries, they're going to see this place get destroyed. They're going to see it. It says, verse 16, and saying, alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to not. You see, riches profit not in the day of wrath. And every shipmaster and all the companies and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by costliness of her, by reason of her costliness for in one hour she made desolate. 
Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God have avenged you on her. See, the Lord is going to do this to this country for what is done to his people, the Israelites. These people that's on the bottom, the bottom of this chart, catching hell, you know, the Lord is going to destroy this place, man. All praise to Yahweh, Shimmy, I will shout on to the next.